Hi, welcome back to the channel. Now, in this month's analysis, I am going to walk through a really high-level, broader market overview. I'll cover all of the major indexes and asset classes. I'll cover a lot of the mega cap tech names. And I also have around 20 individual stock ideas for your watch lists going into the month of May. Now, it has taken around 20 hours to prepare, present, edit and upload so i do hope you find a lot of value from my hard work now for those of you that are new and just stumbled onto my work hopefully the scottish accent isn't too difficult to understand uh, before i get into the charts the market over the last few weeks has been quite challenging with a little mini correction if you've been working with my charts over the last couple of months especially across uh, twitter uh, hopefully uh, my work has helped you to buy the recent dip. Uh, we're now starting to see the early signs of another big rotation after the recent moves that we've seen into a lot of the cyclical energy commodity aligned names. Uh, we're now starting to see the, the mega cap tech hitters uh, knock it out of the park with the earnings. So the indexes are naturally rebounding. I think a lot of folks are asking why. The way that I learned it is the best players really should be scoring the most points. And now that the mega cap tech game is picking up again, we're now starting to see those rotations and a little bit of a regime change. So I'll be walking through a lot of those charts too. Now, for disclosure, myself or my clients may hold positions in some of the names mentioned, but I have highlighted those disclosures and recommendations uh, as well as timestamps on the charts. Now, if you are new to the channel, I like to use a combination of technicals and fundamentals. I am a huge advocate of systematic process. I think most of you know by now that I don't use any magical hindsight indicators. I timestamp absolutely everything, which is massively, massively important. I'm one of the very few who are prepared to go on the record with their work my work is for everyone if you are an everyday investor, trader, options trader, financial advisor, money manager. Uh, my work really has a broad uh, client base, but my work is not geared towards buy and hold forever, unfortunately. I'm looking for structural trends in the market, rebound levels that will last weeks to months, and I like to use logical targets. If we sat and had a beer together, I'd probably tell you that I'm more of a technical investor. I personally prefer buy low, sell high charts, uh, but my work does apply to all styles and that will become very, very apparent in just a few moments. Um, but uh, please do pause the video. Uh, make sure that you are comfortable with that very important disclaimer uh, before uh, going any further. Remember, please do smash the like button as well. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm and really does help to get my work a lot more noticed as well. But I think where I will start is where I like to start. I think most monthly Outlook videos is with the S&P 500 and a very logical uh, risk off signal. Now, if you do follow my, my work across, you know, Twitter, X, you know, whatever you want to call it, if you subscribe to my Substack, you'll already know that I have been um, moving far away from the doom mongering that the, the market is, is kind of seeing at the moment. A lot of perma bears are, you know, really starting to, you know, get really vocal about the imminent carnage that's about to, to kick into the market. So I'd like to just kind of use the... Uh, some uh, economic data, obviously the, the yield curve. But for me, it's very, very straightforward. The, the signal for defensive action or potential defensive action is when we steepen and we uninvert. I think the chart shows this really well as to why we're not there yet. I think I've seen uh, some data that we've been... Um, inverted now for a couple of years, which is the longest that it's ever been. Um, so the, the market is very, very close to all time highs. So I mean, if you've been, you know, subscribing to the doom mongering over the last two years and stayed out the market, 
perhaps for next time the actual signal is when we uninvert it's not when we are inverted but that's all good and well um, where are we just now now the NYSE composite again is my chart of the moment I think it it makes a lot of sense to use this chart. Um, it gives a broader uh, overview of the US markets. It's not limited to a basket of 100 stocks or you know, 30 stocks, 500 stocks. Um, and for me, the NYSE Composite has been rebounding uh, from the, the previous uh, highs from uh, late uh, 2021. Now, one of the signals that I've been looking at here for a tradable market bottom is some of the breadth data that I like to use. It's just a really basic advanced declines. So the number of advances uh, in the market um, is uh, outweighing the, the number of declines. Now, the interesting data three weeks ago that we had was we obviously had a big retest. Now, I covered this chart in last month's analysis preparing everybody for the potential pullback to these levels. But when we reach these previous highs, we can see that the number of advances within the NYSE composite actually outweighed the number of declines. So that's a little bit of a divergence that really just says, look, that this is potentially starting to see the signal of some kind of tradable bottom. Um, we can also use the S&P 500 index and a really basic level, it's a really psychological level for the market, that 5,000 level has acted as support for price over the, the last couple of weeks. So again, th that's something that whilst it's not a guarantee that it will hold or even continue to hold, it is another data point that we can use to say, this might be a level that we can manage risk against. But for me, the biggest tell for the current environment and why I've been looking at this as a, a tradable uh, textbook pullback in the market is the spike that we had with the volatility index and with the VIX over the last few weeks just was not confirmed by credit spreads. And now that's very, very telling to me. It just tells me that perhaps the the volatility just isn't as sinister as I think a lot of folks would have you believe when you get that spike in the VIX or you know perhaps it's a situation where credit spreads are leading the VIX when they when they're both going up together I think that's that's the the issue we just didn't have that the the credit spreads were not confirming the move in the VIX so the three charts that I've really been walking through just over the last couple of minutes. I know it's only three charts. I know there's a million different data points, but when you just filter it down to you know just a a couple of handfuls of the the charts that matter, and you just kind of condense your views on the market, I think it becomes a lot more clear and a lot easier to read the market. At least that's the way that I look at it. So I'm very much looking at the the current uh, environment as a as a buy the dip opportunity with the caveat that if the NYSE composite fails at those previous levels, then that's a risk, that's a full risk off environment and in an environment uh, where you know defensive action is probably warranted. But we're not there. We've got the triple Qs rebounding with the, the mega cap tech earnings, obviously, you know, let's take meta out, out outside that, but I think by and large, I think the reaction to earnings with Apple yesterday, for example, was you know, largely positive. Um, now, one thing to say is that I am recording this uh, analysis halfway through Friday's session, so I don't really know how the market is going to uh, close. I don't think the charts will change too much. I'm quite comfortable with presenting the charts as they are at the moment. We've had the non-farm payrolls this morning. So the markets had another bullish move on the back of that as well. So I'm probably expecting the triple Qs to go and test those previous all-time highs again, um, which marry up perfectly with the Fibonacci levels from the November 21 declines. We've got the Russell 2000 again, has been outperforming uh, along with the... Um, the riskier names over the last couple of days. I think you just need to have a look at some of the short squeeze moves that we've seen 
uh, in the last 24, 48 hours. So I'm probably expecting the Russell 2000 to, to go and test those uh, highs there um, around 210, which again marries up uh, perfectly with the Fibonacci level. The, the micro caps are still stuck below those uh, AV WAP levels uh, from the COVID lows. I think if those levels at 120 get taken out, then I think it's probably full risk on mode for the riskiest names in the market. Now, I have covered this chart numerous times over the last few months. It has continued to fail at these levels. So I'm not making a prediction that these levels will ultimately you know, break out. But I think it makes a lot of sense to start to prepare just in case it does this time. Um, we're only a few uh, percentage points away. So for me, uh, I am very much starting to look at a lot of the, the riskier, beaten up names that could potentially be starting to rebound. But central to, again, the bullish thesis is the what happens with the US dollar index. Uh, now, this is a really basic chart just showing the inverse correlation. Uh, and what the chart is essentially saying is that a weaker dollar is good for stocks, a rising dollar is bad for stocks. Um, so I'm watching the US dollar uh, still with a lot of interest. This chart has been front and centre for me for the last few years. But again, going back to the volatility that we're seeing at the moment, the, the spike that we had, we did get that little bit of a, a spike, a little bit of an excursion above 20. But like I said, the, the move was not confirmed by the, the credit spreads. And as we've seen, we've had a big drop off in volatility over the last uh, week. And that's been in an environment that's rewarded investors for starting to test the waters with, with, with buying stocks. Obviously, the bond market as well, we've seen the, the, the 10 year note is, is falling away a little bit this week. Um, but I think for most, I think TLT is probably the, the, the chart that I think most folks use. At the moment now, I, I do get asked a, about the bond market and TLT quite a lot. I made a massive bottom call on, on TLT back in October, which feels like forever. I had a big massive 20% rally. But now the bond market is kind of stuck in no man's land. There's not any real risk to reward, in my opinion, you know, going long, going short. There's not any real optimal entry into the market. So I am watching with a lot of interest to see if it will get above 92 or whether it's going to pull back to those October lows again. I don't really have much conviction either way. Uh, I'll just wait and see what price it uh, does from here. Uh, obviously, the commodities market is front and center. I think with the massive moves that we've had over the last few months in commodities, uh, I'm sure it's not going uh, unnoticed that whilst we've had a lot of carnage, a lot of pullbacks in the tech space, you know those gold names, the gold miners, the silver miners, um, have all ripped to the upside. Ultimately, those have all met upside targets now. And we are now starting to see a massive rotation out of commodities. Now, I did share this chart uh, on Twitter during the week. Got a little bit of uh, pushback on it, I think. Um, the reason for that is I like to have a little bit of fun with social media and a lot of the relative strength gurus, the, the, the trading gurus, etc., just because, you know, they're all saying look, relative strength is, is where you should be looking to buy. And ultimately, when you use basic charts like the rotation graph, you can actually see that the money is actually starting to flow out of commodities. We can see that it, it's been weakening. We're now starting to move into a lagging uh, phase. And ultimately, what, what will happen is the rotation graph will go around in circles. So the commodities trade will come back into focus I'm sure at some point soon but at the moment the, the, the market for me at the moment for commodities is seeing risk off and I'm seeing rotations into other areas now obviously that just quickly uh, leads me into some ideas I think to consider for the 
for the month of May. Uh, but if you are still here, it tells me that you're getting a lot of value from this analysis. So please do smash the like button. Like I said before, it does really help with the YouTube algorithm. But let, let's start with Apple. I, I think with, with Apple, again, buy low, sell high chart. I know hindsight's wonderful. You can go on to, to Twitter. I've been banging the drum on buying the, the dip in Apple uh, for quite some time. It's taken a good six weeks for the thesis to start play out. Earnings were uh, positive uh, yesterday. And the market seems to agree with that. Uh, obviously, massive share buyback included as well. But I'd be very, very surprised now if we're not going to, to go and test those all-time highs. And, you know, certainly something that, that I communicate with a few hundred of our clients is that with stocks like Apple, you, you have to you have to look at these as opportunities. When they are down 20%, if, if you're subscribing to the, the nonsense that they're a short and you shouldn't look to buy them because of lack of innovation, etc., you know, you, you can't be surprised when they go and announce record stock buybacks. They've got so much cash on the balance sheet that going short is just, you're just opening yourself up to a world of pain. One of the best uh, stocks in the world. It's obviously $2.6 trillion market cap for, for crying out loud. Who, who, who wants to short a stock like that when there are easier shorts out there? Um, so Apple... Fully expecting Apple to, to go and test those previous all-time highs. I'd probably expect a little bit of a pullback over the next couple of weeks, just maybe, you know, retest these levels. Uh, but uh, I think, you know, if you've been buying the dip in Apple, congratulations. Uh, I fully expect it to go and test those, those previous highs. But after the recent correction, going back to what I was saying at the start about, you know, having a preference for buy low, sell high opportunities coming out of little mini corrections if you're not looking at charts as, as a buy low opportunity then what are you even doing you know if you're an investor you know it's absolutely crazy to me you know folks that just keep posting charts buy all-time highs all the time you have to be looking at stocks i think with net like netflix as, as opportunities i've built in two levels here that i think make a lot of sense um I've already shared that this is obviously uh, for disclosure a chart I've already shared with our clients, etc. Um, so these are the two levels that I'm expecting, you know, rebounds here. I'm hoping obviously that this is the level that holds up um, around 550. Um, and I think it's a, a text bound, textbook range bound uh, chart at the moment. Now, Amazon is obviously one of those charts that is pushing against up. Uh, up against all-time highs after, again, another positive earnings. We're, we're a couple of trillion dollar market cap, solid 12-month earnings growth. Um, I think if it does break out, I think the Fibonacci levels here make a lot of sense, as we can see from history. Uh, the Fibonacci levels have been acting like a, a magnet for price. So I think if there is a breakout above those previous all-time highs, I think there's another you know, 17, 18% to, to squeeze out of it. But a chart to perhaps add to your watch lists for next week is the, the chart for Palantir. Now, I know this is a very divisive stock. I, I, just for disclosure, I, I own Palantir. It's been outperforming the market uh, by 25% uh, so far year to date. Um, so I'm obviously hoping for a positive earnings reaction uh, it has rebounded from the logical pivot level at $20 and I hope to see this break out on the back of positive earnings on Monday but you know it's not one that I ever advocate you know jumping in pre-earnings because I think that just becomes a, a lotto gamble I think you're just as well going to Vegas uh, but as it stands at the moment We'll see what happens with Palantir. I think if there is a positive reaction to, to earnings, I probably expect it to go and test that $25 to $27 level. And then, obviously, a little bit of a re-evaluation of the chart again. Um, but Tesla is another one that I, I'm being asked about a lot, especially from our clients, just because of the moves that we've had over the last couple of weeks. Now, I do take the view that there's a tradable bottom. Um, 
This is something that I've already talked with our clients about. There's been heavy buying volume that has come in over the, the last couple of weeks. Um, and ultimately, it's now about systematic process. I like to use you know basic tools like trailing stop losses, etc. Um, so if you have bought the lows here, um, I think it's very, very straightforward. Um, ultimately, use the trailing stop loss and, and, and see how far it ultimately goes. And if it does you know, tank from here, again, that's where risk management uh, probably comes in. Um, one of the charts that I've shared with our clients this weekend is the chart for Uber. Um, now, we have earnings coming up next week, so the, the message is consider it post-earnings, but we have pulled back to logical levels from February 21. Uh, now, for disclosure, this is a chart that was recommended at 50 bucks uh, to our clients a good few months ago. Uh, met upside targets, it's pulled back to a logical level. So I want to see this level hold on the back of earnings. Uh, Micron technology has broken out of a massive 20-year uh, uh, base. So, you know, one of those that I think, you know, $125 billion market cap, I, I think it's one of those that you just, you can you can be bullish above 100 and ultimately just see how far it goes. And, you know, perhaps it does, you know, uh, an NVIDIA, uh, an AMD type move, but uh, it's very difficult to be bearish on a stock that, that's broken out of a, a 20 year base. And speaking of NVIDIA, again, one of our buy low, sell high charts that made a tradable bottom call uh, recently has been moving higher i think provided that you're above uh, these levels uh, around 840 845 i think you can continue to to be bullish i think it's a, another tradable bottom after the recent mini correction obviously earnings will be uh, something that comes into focus in the next few weeks as well uh, dupont i think potentially double bottom setting up for those of you that like breakouts We've had earnings. The earnings were uh, look pretty decent from when I'm sitting. Um, so I think if there's a breakout above $80, then, then potentially uh, DuPont could come into it. Uh, General Motors has already met our upside targets, but it has pulled back recently. And we are now looking for this to, to potentially break out again above those pivot levels dating back to 2017. I think if there is a breakout above these levels, then I think there's uh, every chance there that, that there's uh, some solid gains to be had, provided, of course, and this is the caveat with all the charts, provided the market does not fall off a cliff. Uh, Spotify, very, very interesting to, to me at the moment as well. Um, it has recently met our upside targets, but I'm still watching this now for another breakout there. I think if we can get above that 310 level, then I think testing those previous all-time highs is entirely logical. Uh, we've got Trade Desk. Now, that's a three-and-a-half-year chart pattern that is developing. Again, I think you can add this to your watch lists for next week. Um, earnings coming up on May the 8th. Uh, like I said before, I do not advocate buying positions and guessing what the earnings reaction will be. Uh, but if it does break out on the back of earnings, then that might be an opportunity. Uh, Goldman Sachs is breaking out uh, new all-time highs. I think there's some solid uh, numbers to be had, provided that we are, we are uh, holding above those breakout levels. Uh, SoFi, potential buy low, sell high opportunity um, to be had now. I think the first thing to say is we've had earnings come out for SoFi now. SoFi is one of those... I think a lot of folks see the potential in SoFi, but get really frustrated by the chart. I totally get why the, the chart is a sideways, choppy mess. Uh, but for me, like I said, I, I do like to uh, charts where you can define the risk against you know very logical levels. So for me, it's very, very straightforward. As long as you're above that kind of six, let's call it 650, um, then I think you can tentatively uh, be bullish on SoFi. Um, 
Well, obviously, there's a big shot interest as well, so it would be quite interesting maybe to see it break out above that eight dollar level. I think that could be the the start of a squeeze, uh, but at the moment, it's maybe just one of those that's offering a little bit of a risk to reward proposition with a very easy out uh, below those uh, below those key levels. Um, also got Southern Copper. Again, for disclosure, this is one that we've been long on quite a while, but I think if you zoom in to the daily chart here, which, which I've just kind of built into the chart here, um, there is a potential base that's building here. So I think if it does break out of this base, I think the target for me is around 139, 140. Um, Boeing taken to the woodshed. I had a, an interesting uh, back and forth with, with our clients uh, over the last 24 hours. Say like the whole thing with the whistleblowers and the um, you know snitches get ditches. I think is the the, the joke at the moment uh, with Boeing and. Yeah, it's an interesting one, but just kind of going back to what I was saying about, you know, looking for these tradable bottoms, you know, where they, they sort of base after breaking down below key levels. I think if if it can remain above these levels, then you'd hope that it's a tradable bottom. But with something like Boeing, unfortunately, it's one of those stocks that just attracts news headlines, negativity, etc. Uh, but there are signs there that, that potentially... Um, the the buyers are now starting to to step in a little bit, so maybe bullish above one eighty, and I think if there is any any kind of you know pullback there, I I wouldn't take any chances. I, I just manage risk against that level. I think that's all you can do, or again use trailing stop losses. Uh, Moderna. Now I am sharing this chart with our clients this weekend as well. It has had a a big breakout uh, over the last week. Um, I think on, on the back of, of positive earnings, I think yesterday, um, but that looks like it's a bit of a, an inverse head and shoulders pattern developing. Uh, and again, I think you can manage risk again against that kind of 115 level. We've got a tractor supply company, which I'm sure is a company that not everybody is into, but it has been basing uh, over the last uh, couple of years and it has broken out and Going back to what I was saying at the start about you know Fibonacci levels etc. I think with something like Tractor Supply Company, um, there there is you know significant upside and you know I'm not you know um, disappointed to see breakouts with with a decent little short interest either. Um, Data Dog again I think one to add to the watch lists for next week. I think potentially a breakout above one thirty seven might make some sense. Uh, we've got uh, Organon, again, positive earnings and it has broken out. I did share this this chat with our clients yesterday just because it, it had a little bit of a, a dip on earnings and then that dip got gobbled up by the market uh, and we're seeing follow through today as well. So, um, you know, small disclosure there. And, but one of the charts that, that got a lot of attention for me on Twitter, it's been shared everywhere, just highlighting that obviously China is getting a lot of airtime at the moment because of some of the moves that we're seeing now. For those of you that are you know follow my work closely, you already know that I made a big bottom call uh, back in January on China, the Hang Seng, FXI, MCHI, they all rebounded from historical multi-year support levels so i've got many of our clients in on the ground floor in a lot of the names in china uh, but for those of you that you know specifically look for breakouts etc i think hang saying looks like it is breaking out um, so you know what can we look at well of course alibaba i think everybody and their dog has been trying to predict a bottom for alibaba for years uh, again for me it it's a very straightforward looking base that's been building um over the the last you know six seven months and it does look like we are now starting to get a, a resolution higher there in china but the downside to china is we could you know, the market open on Monday, Tuesday, and, you know, China could be down 5%. So that's the trade-off. Um, but 
like I said before, it's really about just having a systematic process that you can use to manage risk. In my case, like I said, I really like um, trailing stop losses. Uh, TME is already approaching our upside targets. This has been one of the leaders in China and going back to the, the bottom call in January, this has been the chart for us uh, and it's approaching our logical targets there at 1450. But we are seeing big moves in the likes of JD.com, um, which has just been ripping uh, over the last week. And we're also seeing IQ as well, which I think is probably the, the Netflix of China. Um, it has broken out uh, over the course of the last couple of weeks. It's been doing really, really well. Uh, but the next level of interest for us is around 550. Uh, and ultimately, uh, we will see how far it wants to go. Um, but if you're still here, uh, please do uh, smash the like button. Like I said it before, it does really help with the, the YouTube algorithm and it really does help uh, to get my work a lot more noticed. Feel free to share with your social media followers, etc. Subscribe to my Substack. There's a link in the description. But if you are new and you're wondering who I am and what it is I do, uh, please do jump on to our website at honeystocks.com. Uh, our transparent timestamp work is all laid out. I only use my own charts and data, and we provide memberships to all of our premium work, which includes um, access to um, our premium uh, weekend analysis uh, with all of our best charts and also our weekend hot list. It also includes all of our highest conviction investment ideas and I will show you what that looks like in just a second. Uh, it also includes access to our midweek uh, halftime report. We also provide access to a wonderful community of professionals and investors and traders from all across the world provide access to all of our chart books which cover the most liquid stocks, ETFs and commodities from across the world. And if you are somebody that's new to technical analysis, I also provide access to a complete technical analysis program which I'm told is incredibly well built and laid out and it will help you to uh, build a, a, a robust uh, systematic process. But just to quickly show you what our high conviction ideas look like, this is the, the recent idea that was sent out for NVIDIA. Uh, I just talked about that chart just a, a few minutes ago. Uh, a recent alert that went out for, for Coinbase, which absolutely ripped higher. Uh, NU Holdings, which, which ultimately met our upside targets as well. Spotify was an absolute monster. Valero Energy was a, a massive gainer. Uh, and Tesla, one of our buy low, sell high charts, you know, play on capitulation, etc. Um, Meta, again, massive gainer. But I am very, very unique in what I do. I timestamp all of our highest conviction ideas, every single one of them. Um, so feel free to jump on to our website, check all of those out. Um, check that the types of stocks that I like to recommend are the types of stocks that you like to buy. Um, I'm not recommending, you know, penny stock rubbish, nothing like that. It's all high quality stocks uh, in trending uh, sectors as well. But I think my work is generally a good fit for anyone who has a mid-term approach. You're looking maybe a few weeks to a few months out. Maybe you're sick of losing at day trading. Maybe you want to learn about systematic process. Maybe you're too busy with work, family, business, life to find all the best stocks. Maybe you just want to be part of a community because you're sick of hunting around social media. Um, and if you're a professional and you want to have access to a professional analyst daily, um, I do have... Uh, clients at most of the big investment banks now so again it might be a good fit for you as well but um, if you have stuck around to the bitter end here uh, as always thank you very much for watching have a wonderful weekend and I will hopefully welcome you soon thanks very much